Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another one. Today we've got a this is not a top 10 and it's going to be on two ingredients I haven't talked about yet and I'm just going to call them kind of non-traditional florals. You know, they're a little bit different than the usual uh, rose, jasmine, elaine, that kind of stuff. And the two floral notes that we're going to focus on today, uh, one is going to be Narcissus and the other is going to be Osmanthus. Now, so there are two notes that you will see every now and then pop up. And what prompted this video is I'm wearing a sample of a fragrance that someone sent to me that, um, you know, has this gigantic Osmanthus note in it. And I realize it's not a fragrance note I've done and this is not a top 10 on. And I have a handful of Osmanthus fragrances, but uh, I wanted to add Narcissus to the list because they're two florals that don't get a lot of love. And so that's what this channel is all about, highlighting the art, the love of perfumery, and, um, you know, sharing different fragrances for you to try and experience the note and maybe some fragrances that you can kind of put on your to-watch list. So what I'm wearing today is actually a crowd favorite fragrance. And I'm going to do a quick hit video tonight on it because I've been wearing it all day. And it's absolutely insane. Um, it was created by a gentleman named Christian Carbonell, or a.k.a. Chris Maurice is his name. And this is called Nishane Nefs. So this was sent to me by one of you. You know who you are. Thank you very much. My kind perfume god people out there who have sent me stuff. Always a blessing. Stuff I never would have got to try. So I will give you my thoughts on this fragrance. Uh, and it will be in this episode of This Is Not A Top 10. But first, I want to talk a little bit about what is Osmanthus. Osmanthus is a plant um, that normally grows in Eastern Asia. So China, Japan, uh, the Himalayas, Indonesia, stuff like that. Uh, and it's known way back, I mean, throughout the earliest parts of history, um, there are writings and um, you know, there are uh, diaries and ingredients uh, that, uh, you know, um, recipes that use Osmanthus in them. People will actually drink Osmanthus tea in places like China. Um, China produces like an Osmanthus concrete, which is absolutely insane. Uh, and there's even an Osmanthus beer. And so it's kind of an important plant over there, I guess. And... Um, if you are, uh, if you're not familiar with Osmanthus, Osmanthus basically gives off this um, slightly floral, sometimes leathery, but almost always fruity. And this fruitiness comes across many a times as being as smelling like peach or apricot. Okay, sometimes with a slightly animalistic vibe to it. So when you smell Osmanthus. You know, there will be a slight animalistic vibe, and it's going to smell almost like you're smelling uh, like a very powerful, um, you know, very um, long-lasting jasmine, all right? And jasmine by itself can sometimes be long-lasting, but Osmanthus I actually like even more than jasmine many a times because it has this leathery animalic facet, which I really like, plus that fruitiness Depending on the osmanthus and how it's used, um, some people say it can smell like pear or passion fruit or raspberries or I almost always get peach. Like this, you know, extremely photorealistic apricot peach accord when I smell osmanthus. And so um, this fragrance inspired this video today. It's my scent of the day. And so we're going to break this up into two parts. We're going to talk about some fragrances in my collection that have Osmanthus in it. Then we're going to pivot and talk about Narcissus. And the reason we're kind of blending those two together is they're two non-traditional flowers that kind of get used uh, when perfumers want to give a fragrance a little bit of a twist. You know what I mean? Um, and so I actually have more fragrances in my collection with the note of Narcissus. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and you'll notice that many of the fragrances in my collection that have Narcissus are fragrances that are classically targeted towards women, feminine targeted fragrances. But there are a couple in there that are marketed towards men or, you know, they're niche fragrances that are unisex. Narcissus historically has been a much more feminine targeted flower. 
Whereas Osmanthus, you're gonna see it mixed with many interesting notes. Like in Neffs, it's mixed with uh, honey, fig, saffron, whiskey, oud, cinnamon, leather. Uh, and so maybe that's the reason why I say I appreciate Osmanthus um, more because the notes that it mix with, that they histor perfumers historically will mix Osmanthus with, are more to my personal taste. There's lots of things like oud. You're gonna see some amazing ouds in here, amazing leathers, tobacco. And so it's an exciting video. I hope that, I hope you guys learned something from this and um, I hope uh, you find a fragrance or two that you hope to get to try. So you'll be hearing more about Nishane Nefs tonight when I drop my nighttime video. Uh, but first let's do some of the fragrances in my collection with Osmanthus and some that I plan on talking about very soon. Now, one of my good friends, Will, he um, reached out, sent me a couple different uh, versions of samples, and one of them is from the perfumer Henley, which is a house that I'm really interested in diving into. This is called Blonde. So I've got enough juice to spray, wear, talk about, you know, on the channel. It'll be at one of those quick hit videos at night one day. Uh, but Henley Blonde came out in 2018. It's Osmanthus with suede. Again, you're noticing kind of, you're going to notice a trend with Osmanthus. Many times it's blended with leathery suede-like notes, real ambergris in this case with orris, jasmine, sandalwood, musk, and cantaloupe. Now, cantaloupe, I don't know how I feel about that in my perfume, uh, but I will say I trust the brand of Henley, so I'm willing to approach it with open arms. All right, next is a fragrance that I actually did a full review on, and you can see I only have a couple drops left of this, and it's called Papillon's Angelique. Now, Angelique is full bottle worthy. I will tell you that right now, right off of the bat. Go watch my review of this. Um, this, this house actually, everything that I've smelled from this house is full bottle worthy, every single thing. There isn't a single thing in here that's not full bottle worthy. Uh, this came out in 2013. It's classified as like a floral woody. It's probably the softest of all the Osmanthus fragrances I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, this and maybe one or two others fall into that softer Osmanthus category. Many Osmanthus fragrances I smell are beasts. Nishane Nefs is an absolute monster of a fragrance. I mean, this thing... It seems like it's going to last 20 hours on my skin. You know what I mean? Uh, this is kind of the opposite. This is very soft and supple. And it's got this, you know, uh, gentle mimosa with white champaca and a beautiful iris. Liz Moore's does iris, um, you know, like I've, like I've never smelled. She uses iris in such a unique way. She is so gifted. And um, mixing it with this frankincense and cedar wood, many people will say that this is the weakest of the line. I disagree. Maybe weak as far as, um, you know, projection, longevity, stuff I never talk about on the channel. Um, Angelique is absolutely a stunner. And if you've smelled iris fragrances, if you smelled osmanthus fragrances, as soon as you smell this, you're going to know you're smelling something amazing. So... Angelique, I think is full bottle worthy and go check out my interview with Liz Moores on the channel. If you have not, uh, I have a playlist of interviews. You can go find hers. It's pretty easy to find. There's only six or seven interviews on there. Uh, and she's one of them. And she was an amazing interview. I wish we had more than an hour and 15 minutes or whatever it was to chat with her. But um, go watch that interview. She shared a lot of amazing information with us. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. <laughs> Okay, next is going to be one of the most hyped fragrances of 2022. Again, I have a review of this on the channel already. Uh, it's called Emouage Opus 14 Royal Tobacco. Now, Royal Tobacco, um, I liked. I enjoyed it. Uh, when I did the video, I said that I thought that this was the strongest uh, release that Emouage has put out under the fish man, Mr. Salmon. Mr. Raynal Salman, uh, but I've since retracted that statement. I now think that Silver Oud is the strongest fragrance Amouage has put out, and in both projection and longevity and all the stuff I never talk about, and also just strength of offering. I love Silver Oud. I want a bottle of Silver Oud. I'm looking for a bottle of Silver Oud, but I don't want to pay retail, so I'm just kind of keeping my options open. I'm taking my, my time, but... Um, Royal Tobacco is a very good fragrance. It starts off with this oily, frankincense-y, elemy thing. It's supposed to be like a blend of a, um, 
It's supposed to be a blend of like, you know, Cuban cigar making uh, tradition with frankincense making tradition of Oman. And they're both on the same uh, parallel as far as latitude, longitude goes. Uh, there's a beautiful licorice note in here that reminds me a little bit of Yoji Om, which I absolutely love from the late 90s. That's a soft Japanese style fragrance, but if you pay close attention, the um, liqueur with the with the licorice, with the liqueur note, there is a liquor note in there as well. Uh, I think it might be rum. And some of the other moving parts to that is absolutely stunning. And uh, this has all these balsams, labdanum, myrrh, birch tar in the base. And of course, the tobacco is kind of the main theme, but osmanthus plays a part too. So uh, really nice fragrance, but I won't be buying a bottle. And then um, another one that I actually already have, I have reviews on many of these on the channel already. Uh, this is from the house of Marc Antoine Bawa, Bawa uh, by Quintom Biche and Rich Mitch came up with the perfect name for Quintom Biche. Biche Mode. Uh, uh, I like it though. It's uh, Ganymede. All right, so Ganymede is kind of like a little bit of a niche, you know, frag head uh, star in, in the making or in the industry, I should say. Many people love Ganymede. I did a video on it. You can go check out my full thoughts on it. Um... Again, there should be a Marc Antoine Bawa uh, playlist for you to click on. This is the only fragrance in there. It's the only one I've ever smelled. I won't be buying a bottle, but it's this uh, it's this saffron, osmanthus, uh, Akigala wood, huge Akigala wood, this space-like, you know, futuristic-like, um, metallic-like fragrance. I'll, I'll give it one more full wear. I have enough juice for one more full wear, uh, but I don't think I'll be buying a full bottle. And then, one that I wish I could have a full bottle of, this is on the full bottle list. I just won't, uh, you know, I probably will never run across a bottle of this because it's so rare. But I do have a review on this um, on the channel as well already. You can go to my Ariz Lodori drop down and check this one out. This is called Santal Galore. And this is thanks to my, I think Eddie sent me this. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, my friend. Um, I'll have an, I have enough to wear this for another time or two. And this is a special, special fragrance. I honestly think this is the best sandalwood fragrance I've ever smelled, ever, ever. 100% um, full bottle worthy, real deer musk. It opens up with this durian fruit that is extremely unique. And the durian fruit mixes with the osmanthus, and the osmanthus gives this peach-like note, right? So you get the peach with the durian, with the Indonesian sandalwood absolute, and Mysore sandalwood absolute in the base. It's just stunning. I mean, take your breath away stunning with de real deer musk in here. This is um, what the House of Ariz Ladoy is all about to me. And uh, I mean, what a discovery, man. I I absolutely love this. He's got, um, there's a couple from the new collection that have a beautiful, well, first of all, I should say, there's a couple um, from the Atar collection that have beautiful sandalwood notes in them. Uh, like Gulab Attar is one, Genda Attar is another. I think you can still go buy those off of his website. Um, Motia Attar is another. Um, and so if you want to experience real sandalwood, there's many different ways that he still offers you to do that. Unfortunately, you can't go buy this, but the offerings that are out there right now, uh, you can still buy. And I did a interview with Russian Adam. You can go check it out on my channel under the um, you know, interview tab again, the most recent one. We've done three so far. One was two hours, one was four hours, and the last one was the shortest of the bunch. I mean, he was working to fill orders, and I know he was tired, and um, but I appreciate him taking the time to chat with me. But one of them was called uh, Mysore Incenza of the new sprayable Atar collection, and that has real Mysore sandalwood in the base, and it's absolutely beautiful. Tested by, by them to make sure you know, you're getting authenticity. It's not, the problem is it's much softer. It's not a beast like Santal Galore is a huge perfume. My Soren and Senza is like one of those everyday wares. It's softer. Uh, but if you're looking for just beautiful My Soren Sandalwood, you can still find it from the house of Arige Le Doré. Um, okay, next on the list, we're going to go to a house called Carner uh, Barcelona. 
And Carter Barcelona has two fragrances from 2016. I'm very interested in chatting with you guys on the channel about. Uh, one is a... They both, they both come from 2016. And one is called Sandor 70s. And this brand is actually very underrated. I'm liking what I'm smelling from them. I don't own any bottles. Rich Mitch sent me a sample long ago from their line called Queers. Um, Carner Queers is what it's called. Uh, and that's one that I want to talk about on the channel with you guys. Uh, and these two also, Sandor 70s and Black Calamus is the other one from 2016. And they're an interesting house because it seems like you get really good value for money with this house. Uh, Sandor 70s has this suede with Osmanthus Absolute. Again, you're noticing a trend, right? Suede with leather and tobacco and balsams and vetiver and frankincense with Osmanthus, my kind of fragrance. And um, I really am excited to talk to you. Excuse me, talk to you guys about this one. I think it's still available for purchase. It's not discontinued or anything crazy like that. Uh, and at, same for Black Calamus. Um, Black Calamus is the other one that you can still just go buy. It has Indian Calamus, uh, peppery papyrus opening with um, Spanish Labdanum, Spanish Cystus, Osmanthus Absolute, Turkish Rose Absolute, Mexican Vanilla, Oud, Amani Frankincense, and Spanish Prickly Pear. Interesting fragrances. I mean, I have to hand it to this house. And for the money you're paying, you seem to get really good value for money. So I want to talk more about this house as uh, time goes on with my channel. Okay, next on the list, uh, we have a fragrance called Tiger Lust. Now, Tiger Lust um, is a fragrance that... I absolutely loved. In fact, I loved it so much, I went to go buy a bottle. And um, whenever I went to the NSAR website and I saw the price, I was like, nope, not giving him 1200 bucks for this or whatever the hell it is. This is the Pure Parfum. This was very kindly sent to me by one of you. Uh, you know who you are. Thank you very much. He wants to remain anonymous. And so he shall, his wishes shall be granted. But my God, you created a storm in me with this because I almost spent the money. I mean, I almost just said, screw it, I'm going to buy it. But I decided, you know what, I'm going to have some self-control and I'm going to just enjoy this and be grateful for what was sent to me. But man, this is so, so good. It's this osmanthus with animalic notes like civet, castorium, ambergris. Real oud, like multiple types of oud, Chinese oud, Sri Lankan oud, Indonesian oud, and then you get to more sandalwood, tobacco, coffee, blossom. Most people don't realize coffees have blossoms, but they do. Um, the coffee plant will uh, come up with these small white flowers, I think, that bloom. And so it's coffee blossom with black currant, and that black currant mix mixes with the peachy, uh, leathery, Osmanthus to mix with the leathery castorium, to mix with the animalic oud, to mix with the civet, and it just creates this mind-blowing, I mean mind-blowing. And when I saw the price, my, my heart went into my throat because I was like, oh man, I'll never get to have a bottle of this. But E01 is actually the leathery one. I really want to try from them. Someone uh, in the comments mentioned they're going to send me a sample, and so if they do, that would be extremely kind to them. I would absolutely love that. Um, because that's the one that's supposedly very leathery and, and the one that I should be lucky enough. I, I, I hope to get to try it. Okay. Next on the list is a fragrance that I've talked about with you guys many a times on the channel. Again, I have a full review of this. You can go check it out. Uh, it's from the house of Roja Dove and it's called Majestic Aoud Parfum. Speaking of Roja Dove, I did a full countdown of the house. Top 35 Roja Dove perfumes with two bonus fragrances added in. Uh, and Majestic Oud uh, is a good fragrance that doesn't do what the name says. I don't think it's a Majestic Oud. I think it's more of like a majestic floral fragrance uh, with some like Middle Eastern touches like saffron, cypriol, guarjum balsam, you know, stuff like that. This, these Middle Eastern touches, oud, ambrette, civet, 
And it, I think it's a good fragrance. Uh, in style, the closest thing in style that it reminds me to is Roja from the Houtlux collection. Roja's $3,500 bottle shit. Um, you know, it feels like they created uh, this off of like the chassis of Roja's Houtlux. And it does feel very elegant and expensive, but does it smell like a majestic oud like Roja says? Does it smell like you're walking into the Saudi Arabian crown prince's palace and he's burning the finest ouds? No, absolutely not. It doesn't smell like that at all. Maybe to someone that doesn't know what oud smells like. But um, other than that, no, I don't think it smells like oud at all to me personally. But I do like the fragrance, but I would never buy a bottle, especially since it's discontinued. I saw a bottle on eBay for five grand. They can get the hell out of here with that shit. Um, okay, next on the list is a fragrance that I think many people are surprised when they hear that I actually like this fragrance. And the reason I like it is I like pieces of it. As a whole, I don't think it's a very good fragrance, but I still grip my teeth and wear it because I enjoy pieces here and there. Uh, it's called Parfums de Marley Herod. Now, Herod is this sweet, spicy, cinnamony. It has a pepper wood um, uh, ingredient, which I think is a Givaudan ingredient, um, that has this, wait for it, peppery, woody profile. Um, and with osmanthus and tobacco, and the osmanthus is very, very prominent here. So you get this osmanthus, tobacco, frankincense, labdanum, vanilla, lots of vanilla. Uh, a little bit of cipriol, a little bit of patchouli, a little bit of woods, a little bit of musk. Um, you know, it's, if you like things like tobacco vani, those kind of warm, spicy, uh, it's, it's, it's okay. The sweetness comes across as very childish to me, very uh, immature, let's say. Not childish, but immature. It feels like a man who is 22 years old, and maybe he looks like a man, but he's not a man up here. You know what I mean? Um, that's what Herod feels like to me. And yet, sometimes I still enjoy it. Um, people love it around me. Uh, but when I wear it, I'm always like, ah, oh, it's so sweet. Uh, and sweet always comes across as juvenile to me. But anyways, uh, okay. Next is another fragrance that I really like. So you can tell I'm an Osmanthus fan. I am. I'm a big fan of Osmanthus. Um, Another fragrance I really like that the, that um, some people that I know and whose noses I really trust don't, but I love this fragrance. Uh, it's called Guerlain's Queer Entente. Maybe because this has a lot of amber woods in it. I don't know uh, what the reason is, why some people don't like this. Oh, this is so good. I mean, it's Osmanthus and Ylang Ylang. Uh, with leather and musk in Virginia cedar, sandalwood, and tobacco. It's not complex, but it has so many of my favorite facets. That osmanthus and leather combo is a killer combo, man. It really is. Uh, and it works so well together um, because osmanthus naturally has this leatheriness. And then you add this big dollop of whatever they're using here, uh, isobutyl quinoline or whatever it is. I don't know, but it's beautiful. Oh, I love it. I love this stuff. I think it's um, one of the better. This, Bois Mysterio, Ensemble Mythique, and the one that I'm hopefully getting soon, Ombre Eternal. I can't wait to get that bottle. Uh, and I think I'll pretty much be done with the line. I do own Santal Royale, but I'm kind of, eh, that's one that's like, uh, I'd take Queer on Taunts over Santal Royale. Okay. Next on the list, we're going to talk about a discontinued fragrance. And I've got both, the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum. And this is probably one of the softer, along with Angelique. This and Angelique um, kind of wear similarly. They wear very elegantly, okay? Not that they're soft, but they wear very elegantly. This is a proper floral chiffre from the master Jean Carlio, one of the greatest perfumers of all time from the house of Jean Patou. And this is called 1000. So this is the Eau de Toilette. And this is the Eau de Parfum. And these are very hard to come by nowadays. And so Anuj had some, and I had to say yes. So let me read you the back because listen, this is a, I mean, this is a posh, expensive fragrance. The ingredients are top notch. So you've got 
Osmanthus de Sheen, Osmanthus from China, Essence de Rose Bulgari, uh, Bulgarian Rose, uh, Absolute of Jasmine, Absolute de Jasmine de Grass, Jasmine from Grass, uh, Accord Iris Violet, so Iris Violet Accord, which Eura Rose told me they're the same thing. There's no difference between Violet and Iris, technically. It's just how the perfumer doses the materials, interestingly enough. Rose de Mai. Santal de Mysore. Real Mysore sandalwood in here. Patchouli de Indonesia. Indonesian patchouli. Um, and uh, a bouquet with hints of woodiness. And so, yes, it is... Um, it is very good. I mean, it is very feminine, yes. It's technically, you know, if you take your gender historical profile, yes, it is very feminine um, because of the flowers. But I love the way the osmanthus and the violet leaf, uh, the violet iris, violet leaf feel, um, kind of bring it all together with the rose, jasmine, I think there's a little bit of geranium, lily of the valley, with that patchouli, sandalwood, and oak moss. And Jean Carlio makes just perfect classical French bouquets. I mean, the guy is uh, one of the best of all time. Uh, okay, next is a newer fragrance from 2020. This is thanks to Rachel. She sent me this. One of the only full bottles in my collection I didn't buy with my own money. Thanks to her. Uh, she was very kind to send this to me along with another full bottle, which... Um, is completely above and beyond the call of duty. So thank you, Rachel. Uh, but this is from Sense of Wood. This is what their boxes look like. Uh, just a box with a cool little piece of wood on the front. But this is called Plum and Cognac. So their biggest seller, their biggest hit. And I can totally see why. Plum and Cognac is a stunner for the cold. If you like stuff like this, okay? This is um, this DNA. Okay, but instead of tobacco, it's got the cinnamon, it's got the um, osmanthus, the vanilla, the labdanum, and it will remind you of touches of um, Herod, but it also has this rum absolute note that is really beautiful. So it's almost like taking Herod and maybe mixing it with like parfum, um, mixing it with like um, Parfums de la Nuit number two from Roja Dove, the one with the rum. Uh, this has Immortelle in it. I really like this fragrance. The first 15 minutes are just a little bit maybe synthetic, a little harsh, a little sweet. And then once it dries, it just goes into this amazing territory. Stunning fragrance for the cold. Can't wait to wear it during our one-month winter in Texas. Um, okay, so next on the list, we've got a couple Spirit of Dubai's. I've done reviews on all of these or initial impressions. You can go check them out. But the two that use Osmanthus uh, is going to be the original Oud one, the brown one, uh, just the regular Dubai Oud, which I think is full bottle worthy. If you like stuff like the Night, check this one out. This has this, um, it's got that like, it's got that the Night like barnyard Oud, but with a lot more going on. There's fruity notes, pineapple. Um, osmanthus, frankincense, cypriol, pear. There's a lot of fruity notes. And then there's a lot of green notes like pine and um, there's tobacco. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Resins. Uh, but it really does give you this the night-like feel. Uh, and really good high quality oud. This is their highest quality oud used in a fragrance of any of them. Uh, and I wish they would have stuck with this quality of oud for the entire line. It felt like some of the other line took a drop off. The one that I mentioned I did not think took a drop off, though, um, that I thought was full bottle worthy. If you go back and watch my reviews, this is the other one. So both of the ones that I actually liked enough to say they were full bottle worthy have osmanthus in them. How about that? If that goes to show you how much I just must naturally like osmanthus. And this one's called Majalis. I've talked about this on the channel before. This is one where I would like a bottle, but I just won't pay Spirit of Dubai's money. But I've got enough to give it maybe one more wear. Uh, Majalis is so good. Spicy, oriental. Um, 
Arabic coffee and dates with frankincense, real taif rose, osmanthus, beautiful. Uh, spicy cardamom, it just really reminds me of being in the Middle East, being in Jordan, you know. Um, and so, yes, Majalis is the other one that uses osmanthus, and those are my two favorites. How about that? Uh, I never put that connection together until now. Okay, next on the list, we're going to go to a full bottle. And it is John Barbados Dark Rebel Rider. One of the best from Rodrigo Flores Rue, in my opinion. But again, leather is an easy sell for me. So take my personal taste with a grain of, thought, of salt. Uh, but this beautiful Russian leather uh, with osmanthus and labdanum and iris and citron fruit in the opening. So it's unique. It has saffron, uh, cacao to soften the leather, patchouli which also has a little chocolatiness to it. Vanilla, so it's kind of designer-esque leather, but it's beautiful. I mean, this could be a Roja Dove, in my opinion. This could be a Roja Dove creation. Uh, and, you, and the fact that you can still get this 4.2 ounce for 70, 80 bucks is a steal, in my opinion. Um, yes, Dark dark Rebel Rider. I don't have the cap because it's a, it was a tester or whatever. I think it was a tester, or maybe I just lost the cap. But uh, yes, very, very good fragrance and awesome presentation with the real zipper and badass. Okay, uh, the, the last one we're going to talk about is a uh, the only fragrance in, in this list that has both Osmanthus and Narcissus in it. And it's from the house of Mar Old Factif. They come, this is a sample set someone sent me. You know who you are, uh, my famous perfume god people. And this is called Crystal Moon. So I plan on doing a video on these very soon. I just have so many samples to do video videos on. Um, but Crystal Moon is Osmanthus Absolute, Lavender Raspberry, Coffee, Hinoki, uh, Cypress, Juniper, Peru Balsam, Dried Fruits, Amber, with a Jonquil Absolute note. So you may be asking, where is the Narcissus? Well... Um, the reason that this is such a perfect tie-in to the two notes we're discussing is that Jonquil is actually a type of Narcissus. So there's about 50 different types of Narcissus flowers, and um, those yellow, small, or white clusters of flowers known as daffodils will actually bloom off of the Narcissus plant. Jonquil is one of those types called rush daffodil. So you could really get nerdy with this stuff. Um, but Narcissus basically has this very heady, very um, sometimes somewhat green. And some people compare it to maybe like mixing hyacinth and jasmine together as a smell. Um, spicy, some, some varieties spell, spell s smell spicy. Some var varieties smell musky or have vanillic undertones. Um, and they grow, I mean, everywhere, Europe and the Netherlands and, uh, France and, um, I mean, where don't daffodils grow? Um, but yes, it's, um, very rich, green, heady smell and, and used in many feminine targeted fragrances. And we'll talk about those. But again, if you're a guy, don't let the fact that these are targeted towards women put you off. There's a couple from this brand that actually use Narcissus. He must obviously like this. The creator, Sean Mayer of um, Mayer Olfactif. Uh, he must really like this Narcissus Accord. So he uses Narcissus Absolute in this little bad boy. Tempo Rubato. Um, plum Apricot, which again goes perfect with Narcissus Absolute. Neroli Petit Grand. Orange Blossom, Jasmine Grandiflorum, Galbanum, Orris Butter, Benzoin, Leather, and Musk. So these fragrances actually smell pretty good for the price and what they are. Um, this is kind of a niche house. I don't hear anyone talking about them. So I want to kind of do them justice. I want to I want to talk about them a little bit. But uh, the time has to be, excuse me, time has to be right. Um... And then the other one from the house that uses Narcissus is a fragrance called Sun Soaked. And so Sun Soaked is um, Neroli, Narcissus, Bitter Orange, Chamomile, Texas Cedar, and Amber. So yes, uh, probably more of a summer fragrance, but one I'm excited to talk about. 
And then another brand you guys know I absolutely love, and I have a full video on this fragrance already. It's from the house of Dmitry Bortnikov, and it's called Sayet Nova. So Sayet Nova is apricot, narcissus, rum, vanilla, Laotian oud, Bengali oud, Thai oud, and oak moss. And I did really like this. If you go watch my review, it was a little bit sweet because of the vanilla, I think. But this has this rum... Um, you know, the apricot makes it feel like there's osmanthus in here, even though it's not. And so my scent of the day, Nishane Nefs, does have the osmanthus with the whiskey. And so this is osmanthus with rum, uh, and oud. And so these two definitely have something in common. Uh, the Bortnikov is obviously higher quality. But um, this, Nash this Nishani Nefs is, I've been enjoying wearing it, even though it's sweet. That just goes to prove a little sweetness doesn't necessarily make it a bad fragrance for me. Okay, next, uh, we're going to go to another fragrance I have a, a video on. You can go check it out. It's from a fragrance brand called The Zoo. And again, this was sent to me, I think, by Rachel. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Um, and this is called Everlasting. Is the fragrance everlasting? Well, kind of is, and I really did like this. This is labdanum, one of the best labdanum fragrances I've ever smelled, actually. If you want an amazing labdanum, there's a couple things you can do. You can buy Le Lyon by Chanel, one of the best labdanums ever created. You can buy Roja's $3,500 a bottle shit, um, Roja's Hout Lux. That's an am that has an amazing labdanum note, but it's more of a proper chiffre. Uh, with a huge ylang lang and all these other florals in there. Amazing resins. But one of them is this beautiful labdanum. Uh, or you can buy Tom Ford's Discontinued Sahara Noir. That is a fantastic labdanum. And, but Everlasting competes with all of them. I mean, it's that good. But it does have this beautiful French Narcissus Absolute. And since it's an absolute, it's a little bit richer and darker than your average just Narcissus note with musk, woods, and moss. And um, I love this. I loved wearing this. I wore this in the middle of summer this year. And, uh, you know, if you like something like Laird du Desert Marocain, the EDT, which I can wear any time of the year, this falls right into that category, I think. It doesn't have the ambergris that Laird du Desert Marocain has uh, or that Andy Tower ambergris accord that he created, but it's very good. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about a Papillon and another uh, fragrance that I plan on doing an early impression on very soon. Uh, and it's this is full bottle worthy. I love this stuff. This is a proper modern green chiffre. If you like the old school chiffres like Val de Nuit by Guerlain, which is on this list and coming up soon. If you like Chanel number no. 19, that cold, dark... Um, you know, Iris, Narcissus, Shifra, uh, check out Dryad. Dryad is absolutely amazing. Uh, it's got Narcissus, Oak Moss, Galbanum, Costas, Jonquil, and Cedret. So again, this actually has Jonquil and Narcissus. So this has multiple types of daffodils in it. Uh, but that Galbanum with the Civet, uh, it's so complex. This is such a complex scent. I mean, this will take you straight back to the 70s with the castorium, the costus, the labdanum. Um, there's this tarragon note in the opening, which I love. I love tarragon. If I ever created a fragrance, tarragon would be in the opening. Um, and, you know, if you like stuff like Rogue, Chiffre Siam, if you like those kind of Chiffres, you have to check out Dryad. I'm telling you, everything from Papillon is full bottle worthy. One of the best niche houses out there as far as value from money goes. Okay, next we're going to go to a fragrance that the young kids laugh at, but I laugh at the young kids for laughing at this fragrance because this is an absolute gem of a fragrance from 1975. This is Gray Flannel by the house of Jeffrey Bean. This is a vintage bottle from the 80s. Um, and the sprayer is absolute shite, but I've decanted it into, um, uh, you know, this opens up so beautifully, like just staring at rolling hills. Gray flannel makes people think of like stuffy, 
you know, maybe you're like wearing old school plaid. No, to me, this is a sunny day, rolling hills, beautiful sunlight on the green grass. You get this bergamot with um, galbanum, beautiful green galbanum, which was very popular in the 70s. Number 19 came out in the 70s by Chanel, the best galbanum fragrance of all time. I'm going to show you guys a very special bottle later on, one that I don't whip out very often, uh, Neroli. Petit Grand, Lemon, and then the Floral Heart. And I think that Floral Heart is what puts people off, honestly. Um, if you take a look, you've got um, Geranium, Iris, Mimosa, Narcissus, Rose, Violet. Six big florals with um, this Herbal Sage. And then the base is Oak Moss with Almond. Yes, Gray Flannel used almond well before Thierry Vasser used it in the um, uh, in the Lo Medial line with Tonka Bean, Vetiver, and Cedar. What a fragrance, though. Uh, gray Vetiver, uh, gray, gray Vetiver, Gray Flannel by uh, Jeffrey Bean is absolutely stunning, especially in its vintage formulation. Okay, next we're going to go to one of the greatest, again, fragrances for women ever released. I mean, we're hitting some of the big ones. This is Estee Lauder's Youth Dew. And so, uh, Youth Dew. There's the bottom of my bottle, if anyone cares. Um, oh, fudge. Man, if you like YSL's opium, you have to smell Youth Dew. I think this came out in the 50s sometime. Uh, not 100% sure, but I think Josephine Catapano was the perfumer. And this is, the, oh God, man, just the, um, there's a couple fragrances Estee Lauder does that the oak moss even smell, because when you smell a fragrance from the uh, atomizer like this, you're not smelling the top, you're smelling the base. It's the base that you're actually smelling. So when I smell this, and when I smell Azure by Estee Lauder, another vintage I have, one of my favorite leather chiffres of all time, the way that the oak moss just claws at your nose, even from the bottle, is something I've never experienced in any other perfume. The amount of oak moss in these things must be off the charts. Oak moss, benzoin, tolu balsam, peru balsam, frankincense, uh, all kind of just amazing resins with cinnamon. It's 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 the Oriental that created that uh, YSL opium DNA, and um, I love this stuff. I absolutely love it. I'll wear it and talk about it and do a full video before this juice is gone on the channel. Okay, and yes, there is a beautiful Narcissus Accord in the top with uh, aldehydes and every. I mean, it has everything. Uh, don't think because your grandma or great-grandma wore that that that's a bad fragrance. That fragrance is stunning. Our grandmother smelled amazing. Okay, next, uh, we're going to the house of Givenchy. There's two from Givenchy, actually. One from the 70s, one from the 80s. The one from the 70s is a new addition to my collection. It's made by the great Raymond Chailan with Jean-Francois Laty. And um, this is Givenchy 3. One of the best uh, floral chiffres I've ever smelled, ever. I've worn this to bed a couple times now. This is full bottle worthy. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you, before I tell you in the video, I'm telling you now. Givenchy 3 in its vintage form, I, I think it's discontinued. So I don't think you can get it in any form. But if you can get these older bottles, um, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of how to date these, or I, not the biggest fan, I don't know how actually. But I can tell you that this bottle is, I mean, it smells like the ingredients are off the chart. Off the chart, high quality. Um, you know how when you smell like vintage bottles of Givenchy Gentleman EDT, they have that off the charts quality? So does Givenchy 3. Uh, the, the everything, the aldehydes, the galbanum, there's gardenia in here, there's peach. There's jasmine, carnation, narcissus, lily of the valley, rose, iris, patchouli, ambergris, oak moss, vetiver, castorium, myrrh. Okay, so that oak moss, of course, with the labdanum, um, the castorium, the ambergris, uh, the bergamot in the top, the floral heart, make it a proper chiffre. But that resinous myrrh in the dry down, fudge. It is so good. 
And do not let the fact that this was marketed towards women put you off. I'm telling you, if you are just a Shifra lover like I am, if you like stuff like Diaghilev, if you like Mitsuko, if you like Rochez Femme, this is one to put on the list. Trust me. Uh, I'll do a full video. I'll rank my Shifra, my favorite Shifras one day. Okay, next, uh, we're going to another Givenchy. And this is called Satis. Satis de Givenchy. And again, this is a vintage bottle. You can tell by the short ingredient list on the back. Um, sorry, I'm being I'm being uh, pinged. Okay, we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, so Givenchy Isatis. There's the bottle. Absolutely stunning. This is a celebration of a fragrance. This is a, I just got married and I wanna wear the greatest fragrance I can get my hands on. I mean, literally, it's that good. Um, it's created by the great Dominique Gropion. It is still available, but I don't know what the new stuff is like. If you can get these older bottles, do it. Uh, it's got everything, aldehydes, galbanum, uh, there's this fruity, coconutty, uh, honeyed, note in the opening with the floral narcissus, Egyptian rose, tuberose, a beautiful tuberose in here, elang, oak moss, civet, castorium. And you notice these old school chifras we're talking about. This and Givenchy 3, they all have this animalic side to the dry down. It's not just, oh, I'm a nice chifra. No, there's claw. I mean, the claws are out. And I love that about these old chifras. I love that they... Um, you know, they really show both sides of the coin. And uh, they always keep my interest, too. This is so high class. I mean, it's like just being at a banquet, like a bouquet of just beautiful flowers that you can smell. Uh, Dominique Ropion hit the nail on the head with Satis. Okay, next we're going to go to that special bottle of number 19 I was going to show you. And here it is. This is a vintage bottle of number 19 with the short ingredient list. Oh, it's so beautiful too. The galbanum in here is mind blowing. Absolutely mind blowing. Um, uh, what do you say on the bottom? I don't know, but uh, all I know is damn. That's all I know about this fragrance is damn, it is good. Um, probably my favorite galbanum. It used to have Iranian, gal Iranian galbanum in it back in the day. Uh, so cold and calculating. This is a cold, calculating fragrance to me. Um, again, a proper floral, green floral. Um, Iris, Narcissus, Galvanum, Elang, Lily of the Valley, Oak Moss, Sandalwood, Leather, Musk, Cedarwood. Just a stunner. I love this stuff. Uh, number 19. EDT is the one I prefer. I think it's a little bit more masculine. Okay, next. Uh, but if you want the florals to come out a little more, buy the EDP. Okay, next we're going to go to Ungaro Diva. Ungaro Diva, which I've decanted. I'll talk about this. This is a little 7.5 mil. This is a vintage before Ungaro got sold to Salvatore Ferragamo Group, and then they discontinued this. Uh, this was created by Jacques Polge. And if you like Chanel's Coco EDT from the 80s, this came out one year before. Okay, And uh, it's aldehydes with... Coriander, tuberose, orris, narcissus, jasmine, rose, carnation, elang, honey, oak moss, patchouli, civet, vetiver, sandalwood, amber, musk, vanilla. If you like um, Teatro alla Scala, if you like Coco, if you like um, uh, Paco Rabanne La Nuit from the 80s, check out Diva. Diva is right there. I mean, those, those five are in, the best in that category, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, let's talk about a fragrance no one talks about. No one. In fact, I haven't even opened this yet. It's still sealed. It still has the golden little wrapper on it. Uh, I talked about this yesterday when we talked about our Roja. Roja's $3,500 juice shit for the third time, I think we're mentioning it. 
um, that has the gold flakes in it. Well, guess what? He wasn't the first to have gold flakes. This is called Lair Door. L-A-L-A-I-R Door. D apostrophe O-R. L apostrophe A-I-R. D apostrophe O-R. And uh, this is supposed to be marketed as like the most precious juice because it has gold flakes in it, but it's supposed to be like the most, they marketed this at the time. You can find like magazine ads of this where they're marketing it as the most high quality florals and, you know, woods and mosses and all this stuff. Um, but it's orange blossom, narcissus, jasmine, bergamot, violet, amber, mimosa, clove, musk, oak moss, and some wood, woody notes, I guess you could say. But um, yes, very, very excited to crack that open one day and talk about it on the channel. And then we've got Taboo. Dana's Taboo Eau de Cologne. So the one you want is Dana Perfume Corp. Uh, the one you don't want is New Dana Perfume. And I think it's still available, but it, but it's butchered. But, I mean, this is uh, from 1932. This is right up there with, uh, you know, Obsession. Um, this is, you know, right there with some of the best Orientals of the time. I mean, Shalimar. Uh, I prefer Shalimar, but this is really good stuff. Underrated. Because I think the formulations have... I think the different formulations have taken a toll on the public, you know. People don't know what they're getting anymore. And so if you can find an older bottle, I would recommend that you buy it. Uh, the Eau de Cologne is the one that is, uh, I think, still available for purchase. I don't know, though. I think maybe there used to be an Eau de Toilette and they discontinued it. I don't know. But um, if you can find one that says Dana Perfumes Corp, that's the one you want. You don't want new Dana from, from my sources, but I've never done a full comparison myself. I just know there's a beautiful Narcissus note in the heart and lovely Oriental notes in the base. Spicy Oriental notes with clover and stuff like that. Okay, now this is specifically Jonquil. So this is a certain type of uh, daffodil, certain type of Narcissus, and it's called Zing by the house of... Lattizan Parfumea. Look at that wild woman riding that tiger. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, leather, ginger, saffron, iris, caramel, jonquil, cedar, tonkin musk, costus, and castorium. A little bit animalic. Uh, it smells like an updated Russian leather to me. Like a niche Russian leather. At, well, this was 1999. It's also discontinued, unfortunately. But um, if you can find a bottle and you're not paying a big dollar price, grab it if you like leathers. Okay, and then a fragrance I feel I gotta steal on. Uh, this is My Sin by the house of L'Envent. Look at that beautiful slogan. Look at this old ass box, man. Probably from the 60s, I would guess. I really don't know how old this box is, but I would guess it's probably from the 60s just by the wear and tear on the box. Uh, I mean, look at this. Look at this old box. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful bottle. And L'Envent Parfums Corp. Oh, just a stunner. And my scent is so good. Oh, aldehydic opening with fresh neroli with lots of florals, lilac, beautiful lilac, like what you get in um, Mitsuko, clove, orris root, narcissus, jasmine, lily of the valley, rose, elaine, musk, styrax, tolu balsam, vanilla, vetiver, civet in the dry down. Um, man, it's, it's so good. Uh, and it's a shame this is discontinued. This is one of the best perfumes from the 20s. Uh, you know, this is right around the time where the greats, I mean, you're talking Shalimar and all this great stuff that was coming out. This came out in 1924. Uh, it's too bad the House of L'Envent couldn't keep it around. Okay, a niche fragrance I really like. Uh, one of my favorite niche Narcissus fragrances is Tabak Taboo. 
And this is the X-Ray. This is a 2017 version, as you can see. Uh, they do like annual versions of this fragrance, I heard, because it's hard for them to keep up with the ingredients. But um, tobacco, Narcissus, Immortel, Honey, Wild Grass, and Sensual Skin Accord. Um, beautiful fragrance, though. Can't wait to wear that once the weather starts to cool. It is cooling, but it's just not cooling fast enough. And then, two, two Samsara fragrances. One the original, one a flanker. The original Samsara Eau de Parfum. Uh, this is a bottle from like 2003 or something. It still has the five-digit batch code. It's still a lot better than what they're putting out now. I don't know if it has the Mysore in it, but I like it enough to keep it. I'm not going to screw around with it and sell it and try to get an older one. Um, but Elang with peach, orris, jasmine, narcissus, carnation, violet, amber, iris, musk, sandalwood, tonka, and vanilla. I love Guerlain. Every time I wear a Guerlain, I always feel like I'm just wearing the best of the best of the best. You know what I mean? Uh, there's a flanker that came out from Samsara that very few people talk about, but I love it. I think it's an amazing Samsara flanker for the warmer weather. This is called Un Air de Samsara. Thank you, Anuj, for sending this, by the way, as a free gift for doing business with you. That was a very kind thought. Uh, this stuff is so good. Bergamot, Jasmine, Mint, and Narcissus. Fudge, it's good. Uh, interestingly enough, Rich Mitch sent a sample of this to the Wafts, to the Lofts guys. You can go check their early impressions of some of the vintage fragrances that Rich sent to them out. Um... Okay, next is going to be an amouage. Yes, an amouage. Uh, this is Fate Woman. Stunning, stunning bottle. Look at that. I mean, like you're looking at the dome of one of the most gorgeous buildings of all time. Um, Non-magnetic cap. Fate Woman is... <laughs> if you like Youth Do, YSL's Opium. If you like Dana's Taboo, this is the niche version of all of that. It's cinnamon with chili, pepper, rose, narcissus, jasmine, frankincense, labdanum, vanilla, more frankincense, benzoin, castorium, patchouli, oak moss, and leather. Forget this woman stuff. This is just completely unisex to me. Just a beautiful oriental. Um, love, love, fate woman. Uh, and I ranked my amouages recently, so you can go see what my favorite amouages of all time are. And then... Probably one of the greatest Guerlains of all time. This is Val de Nuit. Val de Nuit uh, in Eau de Toilette is how I prefer my Val de Nuit. Although I'd love to smell the X-Ray. I've never smelled any Guerlain X-Ray. Is that like a crime against the fragrance gods? Galbanum, bergamot, mandarin orange, uh, orange, orange blossom, lemon, aldehydes, iris, narcissus, vanilla. Has this coldness to it. Kind of like number five has this coldness to it. This has this coldness to it to me. Oak moss, spices, orris, musk, and sandalwood. Really, really good. Uh, and then we've got a Balmain fragrance. This is called Ivory de Balmain. So you can see, look at all these women's fragrances we've been talking about. Um, Ivory de Balmain. There's only one out and out masculine that I've talked about so far, and that's gray flannel. There's two at the end. So there's only three straight up masculines. The rest are either unisex or women when it comes to Jonquil or, you know, Narcissus, Daffodil, whatever you want to call it. Ivory de Balmain is a little bit of a unicorn right now. I think I'd prefer Ivory de Balmain for men. Uh, I did a video on that one too already. This one I haven't done a video on yet. It's a very complex floral chiffre. This is extremely complex stuff from the 80s, 1980 exactly. Aldehyde, listen to this note breakdown. Aldehydes, Artemisia, Asaphotidita, shit, I don't know how to pronounce that one. Bergamot, chamomile, mandarin orange, tagets, violet, lemon, carnation, orris root, jasmine, lily of the valley, nutmeg, narcissus, neroli, pepper, Turkish rosy, lang, cinnamon, amber, oak moss, raspberry musk, patchouli, sandalwood, tonka, vanilla, vetiver, and frankincense. Holy shit, and it wears like that too. It is extremely complex. Uh, I don't know if it's my favorite, but uh, I can appreciate its complexity. But one that is my favorite, I'll tell you this right now, this is fire right here. If you can find this in an older formulation like this one is, I think Anuj might even have some at Enchante. Um, fuck. Oh, man. 
Miss Dior Esprit de Parfum. Now this is just in a refill. I got it because it was the cheapest way to get juice, but uh, pfft, holy moly. Um, Edmund Rudnitska strikes again. Uh, bergamot with that galbanum. You notice galbanum is used a lot with Narcissus. Galbanum, gardenia, sage, carnation, jasmine, narcissus, neroli, rose, oak moss, labdanum, patchouli, sandalwood. And it just smells like you're smelling this dirty, you know, like you're smelling this, like you're smelling maybe like a scarf of a woman who smoked or maybe she like, um, I don't know, had it in her car and then she sat on it and drove eight hours and, and you know, her uh, thigh sweat just got all over the scarf. I, I don't know how to describe what I'm smelling in Miss Dior. All I know is I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It's so, but it's a chifra. It's a, I mean, I love well done chifras and the chifras of the past are the best chifras of all time. Uh, and this is so good, man. It is just, it's um, it's honestly backup bottle worthy, but the problem is Miss Dior has been through so many reforms, you really don't know what you're going to get. All right, let's do the last two for guys. Uh, we've got Halston Catalyst for men, an amazing spicy woody scent. You talk about complex. I read off the notes for Ivory de Balmain. Let me read these to you. Vassal, Bergamot, Tarragon, amazing opening. Galbanum, jasmine, caraway, lavender, mandarin, orange, mint, narcissus, orange, rose, sage, tuberose, and vodka. That's the top. The heart of geranium, grass, chamomile, bay leaf, lily of the valley, nutmeg, rose, blackcurrant, violet, cinnamon. That's the heart. Base of amber, benzoin, oak moss, castorium, labdanum, leather, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, tonka, vetiver, frankincense, and cedar. Damn. It's so good. It's so spicy and so... I don't know. I don't know how to describe this. I mean, it's so many things. Um, it's fruity and yet green. It's spicy and yet woody. It's resinous and yet animalic. It's clean and yet leathery. It's woody and frankincense. I mean, it's everything. It's so, so good too. And uh, this is the original Halston Fragrances Ink bottle. But uh, I think I got this from Anuj before the rush came and grabbed all of his good stuff. But damn, it's good. Damn, it's good. Uh, and finally, uh, if you like leather and suede like I do, this is one to put on the list I don't talk about very often. Uh, but it's uh, from the house of Gianfranco Ferre. Look at that leathery, suede-like outer shell. And this is called Pantaccio 21. This stuff is, oh, stunning. It's a stunning suede, um, er, um, spicy suede is how I would describe it, with some herbal sage and spicy cardamom, a little bit of rosemary to keep it extra masculine, with narcissus, cypress, underused note in perfumery is cypress, but it dries to this angelica, patchouli, musk, suede, and myrrh. And that suede and myrrh combine to just do wonders. Uh, I love this stuff. No one talks about it. I think I've heard Chris from Scentland talk about it. And you probably hear me and Rich Mitch talk about it. And that's it. Um, what a fragrance, man. What a fragrance. The cap smells like absolute shit because it's like the cheapest Italian leather or cheapest Italian plastic you could ever imagine. And um, I think it's probably radioactive. I think it's probably made in, uh, uh, it's probably made in, uh, you know, it's probably made in Fukushima or something, but, um, or Three Mile Island, or I guess they didn't have Fukushima back then when this was made in 99. But uh, man, it is, um, it is really, really good stuff. So that's my list. Uh, shout out to Osmanthus and shout out to Narcissus for making this This Is Not A Top 10 happening. Thank you to you guys for watching, liking, subscribing. I'm loving the interaction in the comments. Um, you know, I, I just, I love doing these videos. Um, that's why I keep doing them because I really do enjoy talking fragrance with you guys. I enjoy uh, hearing the stories that you guys tell me about finding bottles that you heard from me and then you loved it and stuff like that. 
Uh, so thanks to everybody who has supported me. And uh, hopefully you'll see me tonight with a video with my takes on Nishane Nefs. All right. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, guys. See you later. Bye now.